Good morning, everybody. It is such a blessing to be here. It's been a while since I've been up in front of you. And um, I uh, attended the 8.30 service and played bass during the 8.30 service, and I just want to um, give some kudos to Pastor Tim. I, I know that you guys didn't know that your pastor was a lead singer in a rock band. Uh, and and as, a, as a musician, I can tell you, you've never lived until you've played in a band with Pastor Tim singing. <laughs> it has been uh, a highlight and joy in my life. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> as, uh, as somebody said to me after I got done singing, don't quit your day job. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, it was a lot of fun. Uh, we don't get the opportunity to do that much anymore, but it's, uh, it was a blast to do that. Um, it, like I said, it's a blessing to be here uh, this morning and, and speak with you guys. It's been a couple years since I've been up here. Uh, my beautiful wife and I, who has her head down in the back, because uh, she doesn't want me to talk about her, uh, she's in attendance, and we have been really busy lately. Uh, we welcomed our third grandchild into the world uh, recently, uh, and hopefully I'm going to get his name right. Weston Reese uh, was born about three weeks ago, and that makes three grandchildren for us. And uh, one of the cool things about being a grandparent is, you know, you really don't have to do anything. You know, I like that. I'm really good at that. Um, and I, I love that. All you got to do is show up and play. And, and how much, it can't get any better than that. You show up and play with the kids, and, you know, when they start to do something strange, you call mom. And mom comes and, and, and picks it up. But like I said, we've been busy of late. Uh, three weeks ago, we were at Bayfront Medical Center uh, with my daughter, Jennifer, and uh, I went in to visit her in the delivery room, and, um, and my wife bear, will bear this out, and, and I know most wives will, but uh, we all know that men are as close to perfection as walks on this planet, uh, and most people would agree with me, uh, but in the delivery room, I found that I made a mistake, and uh, I don't know how I did it. Uh, my daughter and I were visiting, we were having some conversation, and I realized that... Um, I said the wrong thing when she picked something up that was rather hard in nature. It was a solid object. Um, we were talking, I was talking, she wasn't talking. I was talking about um, future grandkids. And I realized that the look that I got from her, that was something you don't talk about in the delivery room with the lady who's getting ready to deliver a baby. So, and I really didn't recognize I made the mistake. So I kept going. And I put my order in for next year. I want two granddaughters, and I already named them. And I even put in the order of how I want them to look, with their hair and eyes and stuff like that. And then I looked at my daughter, and she had picked up that solid object, and it looked like she was going to throw it at me. So I realized at that point I made a serious mistake that would probably end up in me being maimed. So I exited the delivery room as quick as I could. And you know, a couple hours later, Weston shows up. And uh, it's been a blast so far. So uh, it's, it's a wonderful thing. It's great. Um, so before we get started, let's, uh, let's uh, have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, please open our hearts and our minds to you during this hour of worship. I'm going to start off with a passage from Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 to 18. And this is Peter's declaration to Jesus. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? Well, they replied, Some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others say Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. Then he asked them, But who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the, mess the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, You are blessed, Son of Simon. Simon, son of John, because my Father in heaven has revealed this to you. You did not learn this from any human being. Now I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock, and upon this rock I will build my church, and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. You know, in preparing for the sermon, I've realized that I've been hearing a lot of negative comments about the church. And we tend to hear a lot of negative stuff about it, so I thought I'd spend my time up here talking about what's right with the church. The positive side of being a follower of Christ and not the negative side, no matter what the news presents to us, no matter what you hear uh, during this current political process that we're going through, 
but the positive side of what we're doing. In Matthew 16, Jesus is talking about foundation. The church has the right foundation. For 2,000 years, we've had the right foundation. Everything has to have the foundation. You can't build a building without a foundation. You can't, uh, you can't enter into a relationship without a foundation. You can't drive a car without a foundation. You can't cook a meal without a foundation. For the last 2,000 years, the church has had the foundation because Jesus is that foundation. The second point I wanted to make, that we have the right leadership. Now, leadership is a little problematic sometimes in that we all make mistakes. But the wonderful thing about making mistakes is that, number one, we're forgiven, and number two, we never stop trying. To understand what the leadership of the church really is, all we have to do is look at Colossians chapter 1, where Paul is writing that Christ is also the head of the church, which is his body. The church has the right leadership. We also teach the right doctrine. Doctrine is simply what you talk about. And as long as we are using the Word of God as a basis for our teachings, we will always be correct. Now, there are some out there that have some falsehoods, and we have to be able to recognize that. But Isaiah tells us in eight, or chapter 8, verse 20, that as long as we follow God's instructions, we will never be left in the dark. He tells us clearly what to teach, how to teach it, and who to teach it to. The church has the right purpose. Now, a lot of what we hear is that the church is not viable anymore. That the church has no place in current society. And that our communities do not need us. And I would beg to argue about that. The church needs us, communities, society, and our country needs the Christian church more than ever. You know, there's a lot of purposes out there when we start to think about other organizations. We think about IBM, we can think about Apple, we can think about Google, we can think of all of these guys that have a purpose to what they do. And their purpose is to make money, make computers, sell coffee, whatever. But when it comes right down to it, the purpose of the church is Jesus Christ. Matthew tells us very clearly in Matthew uh, verse 28, or chapter 28, that we are to go out and make disciples of every nation. As long as we adhere to that, we will always, always have a purpose. The church is the right reward. And I absolutely love this one because I was thinking about this recently. No one does anything without a reward. I have a friend who used to tell me that nobody does nothing for nothing. And the school teacher in me, that sentence drives me crazy a little bit uh, because the structure is terrible. Uh, You know, we work 40 hours a week. Some of us work 50 hours a week. Some of us work 60 hours a week. But we always expect a reward at the end of that. We plant a garden because we expect to see vegetables, unless you're me and plant a garden and you expect to see it die, which it does pretty regularly. The difference between the church and IBM is that we know the end of the story. We know what's going to happen when the end of our days happens, and that as long as we continue to stay focused on Jesus throughout our life, Jesus is the reward. We know that as our life ends, We will be there with him. Now that's not to say that everything is fantastic with the church. There are a couple things that we can can do better. And I narrowed those down into really two areas. The first one is fellowship. Fellowship is a little bit lacking sometimes because I know you've heard this before and I know that you know what fellowship is, but just as a review... Fellowship means to have in common, to share, to participate for a common cause. One of the things that we need to ask ourselves as Christians are, is, what are we doing together other than coming to church on Sunday? Are we feeding the homeless? Are we helping people? Are we doing things that further Christ's mission here on earth? And if we're not, we need to act accordingly. There's so many people in this church that have such great talents. All we have to do is step forward. 
All we have to do is make it happen. Part of being in fellowship with one another is that making sure that we are going in the same direction and we're flying in, in formation. Now, the seasons are changing, of course, all except here in Florida. I don't think the seasons ever change here except for that one day in February that you have to wear a sweater. Every other day, is, you know, it's like warm and you're sweating. Uh, but up north, it's starting to change. Pastor Frank probably experienced some of the colder weather up there. Uh, when I lived up north, I always used to love when it changed because I would be able to look up and I would be able to see geese flying overhead. And I was always fascinated by the geese. I always fascinated by how could they stay in such a V formation. And I was just amazed until I started to read a little about, a bit about it and I realized that they stay in that formation because it makes it easier to fly. You see, the geese in the front are flapping their wings, providing lift for the geese in the back. Now, this particular church has been on this property for 50 years. There have been a lot of people that have been in front of us, flapping their wings and giving us thrust and giving us lift. We need to capitalize on that and continue to move forward being a presence in this community. The last one I wanted to talk about was sharing the workload. Picture the geese, which are my favorite animals by the way. Picture the geese again. They don't have the 80-20 rule. I think everybody knows what the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of the work is done by 20% of the people. That makes it difficult. I can't imagine the geese having that kind of rule because then the geese are starting to float all off and I've never seen that happen. By, having, by sharing the workload, it makes it easier to get things done. The work of the church is important. It's building the kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 reminds us that we are one body with many parts. Everyone has a part to play. All we have to do is step up and say, what is my part? How can I get involved? What can I do? And by saying that, we continue to build the community. We continue to make things happen. As Christians, we should walk out and hold our heads high. If we add in some fellowship to the foundation and leadership and purpose and reward, we will have people flocking to us. Because people want to be involved with successful organizations. The church is successful. We've been around for 2,000 years. So when you start to hear things that are negative, lift your head higher and say, that's not true. We are Christ's body on earth, and we will continue to work as hard as we can to make that happen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, empower us with a positive spirit as we leave your house today, knowing that you will be with us in everything that we do and say, if we only allow it. Help us, Father, to know that we can make a difference in our community and world just by showing the light of your love to everyone that we come into contact with. In your holy name, amen.